Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. So for today's video, it's really fun. So basically, I'm just going to talk about all these new arrivals at Sephora. I'm going to put them on my face and I'm going to tell you if they are worth your money or not. So <laughs> if you're interested in seeing me talk about new products at Sephora, then just keep watching. how this video is going to work is I went online on the Sephora website and I went to their new arrivals page and basically if it was on there and I owned it I'm throwing it in this video I even throw in a few things that weren't on that page because I feel like they're new when Sephora took them off for some reason some of these items I may have done full dedicated videos on I may have mentioned them previously in a video or even some of these I've never even talked about so you're definitely gonna want to stay tuned for this all right so the first item that I have is face primer I only have one to talk about today and this was on the new arrivals but it's new to me I've never tried it I've wanted to try it for a while now it is the Ola Henriksen banana bright face primer so I tried this um, many times at Sephora before as a swatch like just rubbing on my hand and I never bit the bullet to buy it until recently so I'm just gonna try it on right now it smells really nice uh, it definitely does smell artificial though it smells like one of my childhood lip balms kind of tastes like it too honestly but it left my skin feeling really nice it's not too overly moisturizing but it definitely does have a moisturizing component to it so um i'm gonna go with i like this i would definitely have to keep you guys updated on this but let's move into a brand new foundation that sephora just released from benefit i did just do a full dedicated review video on this foundation so definitely check it out if you want a little bit more detail but this is the benefit hello happy flawless brightening foundation so if you watch my review i really Really, really liked this so I have only tried this once and that was that one time on camera so I decided that this is one of those foundations where less is more so if you do more than two or three pumps you're probably using too much so today I'm gonna try and use two because in my video I actually used four so this foundation like I said I really like it it does oxidize like I wouldn't say about two shades so definitely if you're in store give it some time to oxidize on your hand before you pick out what color you want I have the shade number four it is a little bit too deep on me but it is still really nice I'll get more tan soon so I just did another half pump so overall, I'm using one and a half pumps on my face, and I definitely like this even more than I did the first day. So this is a medium coverage foundation. I would say it's a natural finish, and I really, really love it. So I don't have a new concealer, unfortunately. So really quickly, I'm gonna throw on my Laura Mercier. Before I set my face, I'm going to go into cream contour. I have the Huda Beauty Tan Tour in the shade Fair. Normally, I would get a light shade, but this looked awfully dark. So this is another product that I've never tried. I've only swatched it. Yeah, I was saving this for a trying full face of new makeup I've never tried before, and it like never happened. From what I've seen, it looks like it blends like a dream, and I really like this color because it's not too much. It's not too intimidating. This is blending out super nice. Nice. like really melts with the touch of your finger I feel like Huda products are really hit or miss people rave and rave about this brand but honestly with the products in this brand it's like I either love them or I hate them from what I can tell this is a really nice product it's blending super nice I really like this color too so this is a hit for me. Okay, so I have two face powders to talk about with you guys. So the first one goes along with the benefit. This is the Hello Happy Velvet Powder Foundation. So I have this in shade number four, and I really like this powder foundation. It's not super full coverage, but it really smooths and blurs the skin. I think this is really nice for setting foundation. I just used it to set my under eyes. I personally don't love this powder for setting my under eyes, but it's a lot softer than the other powder I'm about to talk about. But yeah, this is a very smoothing powder um, and it complements the foundation really nice. The other one I want to talk about, this wasn't on the new arrivals, but it's fairly new. This is the Jouer Soft Focus Hydrate and Set Powder in the shade Light. And I'm just going to set the rest of my face with this. Now, this definitely runs a little bit deep because this is light and it is like deep. And if I look a little orange right now, 
I know these products are too dark for me. I bought these in anticipation for the fact that I'm going on vacation for four weeks. <laughs> They're dark right now, but they won't be soon. So this powder I don't like as much as the Benefit. It's a little bit heavier to me. I don't think it's a bad powder at all. It does smooth and it sets makeup very, very nicely. I just don't like it as much as the Benefit, but it's a lot less messy. So there is something to be said about that. Okay, so for bronzer, I know I already did Tantor, but I do want to mention the Natasha Denona Tan Bronze and Glow Palette. My opinions since the initial review are the same really. I think this bronzer is a little bit more rosy than I prefer. I think this works better on medium skin tones, not for my skin tone. The quality of the product of all of these items is quite spot on. I think you will really enjoy this palette if you enjoy the colors, but it's just not really made for my skin tone. I have been using it, double checking, triple checking, quadruple checking how I felt about everything. Like I said, opinion still stays the same. But I will say I have been enjoying this highlighter more and more. I haven't reached for the cream products quite as much but the quality of this is really good still okay so i'm gonna go to the eyes i have a few different eye products to talk about with you guys looking at them it looks like i have reviewed and have dedicated videos to all these palettes so check them out if you aren't interested so the first one that we have here is the natasha denona sunrise palette this is gorgeous i love everything about it i don't think it's my first choice in color scheme but i have nothing bad to say about the quality i love the style the price of this was awesome. I do have a tutorial coming up if it's not up already. Just creating another look using this palette and again it is super nice. Definitely recommend this if you're looking into Natasha Denona. I also just recently did a review of the new Kaja Bento Box trios. So these are different because they actually have mattes in here. The old ones just had all shimmers and the quality of these are awesome. I loved these 10 times more than I thought I originally would so definitely check out that video to see the colors individually but we have glowing guava hello azalea chocolate dahlia and poppy champagne all of these are stunning they're so easy to create looks with they are the most beautiful colors you really should check out that review because these are not hyped up enough these are awesome these are an older product for me however they are brand new to sephora they just arrived so these are the Vizzy art rose and warm edit palettes so these are really awesome because i think these are very fairly priced you get a lot of colors there's not a ton of product in them but for somebody like me who doesn't grab for the same palette every day. I prefer that. I get to pay less for less product. I personally prefer the warm edits a little more and I'm not a big warm eyeshadow kind of person, but I like the quality of this a little bit better. If you like a more soft romantic look, you will like rosé. I think these are really good, a really great way to transition you into Vizier if you're interested in trying them and they are the most travel friendly palettes ever. I am definitely bringing these with me on vacation. If you are looking into these, go ahead and get them, girl. We also have the Huda Beauty Neon Obsessions palettes. I bought all of them. So this first one we have here is the neon, I think it's the green one. I did not like this one. This one, I felt the colors were hard to decide what to create a look with. They weren't very good quality. I couldn't get much pigment from the swatches. I really only liked the neon color in this palette. The rest, I did not enjoy. We have the neon pink palette. I did really like this one, but you have to like a good fluorescent pink. I liked the shimmers in it, and the mattes in all of these are really, really good. So if you are looking for some good neon mattes, these are the place to go. And then the orange one was my absolute favorite. I feel like you can create the most looks with this one. Um, it's the most inspiring to me and a little bit of the best quality, I would say. So I do like these. I don't love these. I don't think you need them, but if you are looking for a fun palette for summer, I would recommend picking up one or two of these. I like some more than others. And then the last eyeshadow palette I have to talk about is the Dominique Cosmetics Rustic Glam Palette. I really do enjoy this palette. I created a gorgeous look with it. At first, I wasn't going to purchase this, but at the end of the day I am quite happy that I picked it up so I do like this if you are interested in the color scheme the quality of these are good I would say though of all the new releases I probably am most excited about the Kaja just because I feel like I found a hidden gem but I do still love the Natasha Denona palette and the Vizzy Art palettes but these are just so good so I'm just gonna do a super quick eye look I think I want to keep it pretty neutral today that's weird for me but let's do it Okay, 
so I really just said I was gonna do a neutral look. <laughs> For the most part, I did just end up using the Huda Orange Neons palette, but um, I'm gonna do liner and lashes, and then I will be right back. Okay, so next order of business is blush. I have a few blushes to show you. So a few months back, it seemed like blush palettes were the big thing. That has slowed down, but there still are some new blush items. So these, I feel like, shouldn't be on the new arrivals. They've been out for a while now, but they were, so I'm just gonna talk about them. These are the Nude Sticks Nudies Bloom All Over Dew colors. I have Sweet Peach Peony and Cherry Blossom. So these I do really like. So this first one is Cherry Blossom Bay, a brighter pink. And then this one is Sweet Peach Peony, which is that one that's not as bright. So I really like these. They definitely are different from the normal ones. They really are more dewy on the skin. What I don't like about these is they are a little bit sticky. So while, once you get them on the face, they're really pretty, they're really dewy. I don't notice them picking up my foundation. However, when you go like that, it literally pulls your cheeks out a little bit because these are sticky. They don't dry down and I wish they did, but still kept that radiance. They do keep the radiance you're just your face just stays sticky it's kind of gross so if you can get over that these are really really nice products but if the stickiness bothers you you're not going to like these another blush product that we have are the cover fx monochromatic blush duos so these went really popular which is why i'm imagining they're still on the new arrivals page so i did end up collecting three of these at the end of the day i made three separate orders because i liked them so the first one that we have here is warm honey this is going to be beautiful on deeper skin tones. Now, all of these are very pigmented, so the darker colors really are going to show up on dark skin tones. Um, this almost is a little bit of a bronzer on me. It's not the most flattering on my skin tone, but when I just use a touch, it's really pretty. And I like to just do a quick wash of this all over the cheek to give me a little bit of shimmer because it can't be used as a highlight. It's too dark on me. The next one is Mojave Mauve. I really love a pink blush, so this is gorgeous. This I'll kind of use as a transition between the blush blush and the highlight because it is a touch too dark to be used as an actual highlight but it gives the cheek a really healthy glow I really like that one and this one's probably my favorite I think it's most everybody's favorite this is soft peach just because it's the most wearable I can get away with using this as a highlight this is going to be the best color for fair skin tones but what I like about these is they are very blendable and they are very pigmented generally speaking I don't care for a pigmented blush however I feel like these are just such a good formula and they're so blendable that it's okay and it really is going to work well on other skin tones I'm gonna show you a little bit of warm honey because I feel like actually soft peach will match a little bit better but I just feel like using warm honey so we're gonna lightly tap and like literally a couple taps and I have both cheeks covered and this is a very very light wash as you can see and then I'm going to put on just a little bit of the shiny side right over top to give my cheeks a little extra oomph but yeah, I love these. The hype is really real. All right, so highlighter. I only have one highlighter to show you, and that is the Dior Backstage Glow Face Palette. I had originally intended to do a review on that, and then it never happened. So this has a lot of different finishes in one. This color, obviously, I cannot use. That has to be used as an eyeshadow. I really like this one. It's very sheer. At first, I thought I didn't like it, but it actually provides a really natural, gorgeous highlight on your cheek. You do kind of have to dig in with it. You can't use one of those brushes that are too soft that they don't pick up product. You have to find a brush that has some grip to it. These two I noticed are a little bit on the glittery side. They're not super glittery. They do have a very micro fine glitter to them, but if you don't like glittery highlights, watch out for these. But this one is super smooth. These have a little bit of glitter, but it's not bad. I personally really like this palette. I think this is a beautiful formula. So I'm gonna use a little bit of this right here. You see how it's like soft and it really just blends into the skin. It melts right in it is gorgeous and then i'm gonna top with a little bit of this gold color because i feel like it's gonna look really good with the eyeshadow 
um, and it, this adds a little extra pizzazz as you can see super pretty I'm going to put a little bit of this also in my tear duct I don't like this quite as much as the original glow face palette but this one is still really nice like I do not regret purchasing it at all okay so now let's get into lip products I do have a few different lip products to show you so Charlotte Tilbury came out with a new lipstick collection at the hot lips too it had 11 shades um, I swatched all of them did lip swatches a whole dedicated video on them so I'm gonna let you guys go check that out if you want to see the colors but they have really cute packaging really gorgeous colors I love these they are totally worth it go see my video to see what colors you should pick up my favorite one in the line is glowing Jen I really like Karina star for the summer here's Karina star it's in my hand I think it's the perfect color for the summer JK magic and in love with Olivia are my favorite nudes but yeah just go check out my video that'll answer all your questions I also these were on the new arrivals but they're new to me and there was a influencer collaboration I didn't know the influencers but I thought their product was gorgeous and these are the Bobby brown crushed liquid lips so i believe they chose a influencer from each coast the darker one is west coast bay and then the lighter one is east coast slight these are so amazingly gorgeous i love them now this formula from bobby brown i can't decide how i feel about it it doesn't dry down it's called a liquid lip and that makes me think it's gonna dry down but it's not it's almost like a gloss definitely use a lip liner with these and then these right on top and it's beautiful it's not very long wearing but I, I, I like these but there's something that I can't quite put my finger on that just seems strange about these to me but I really really love East Coast Slay with a lip liner absolutely gorgeous so the way I would describe these I suppose is a liquid lipstick that doesn't dry so it applies like a liquid lipstick and then it doesn't dry it is a little bit more sheer than an actual liquid lipstick and then this is the West Coast Bay this colors a little bit different I think it'll be really pretty in the fall I like these kind of brown colors it almost has like a yellow undertone to it this with a brown liquid lipstick mm -hmm, that's gonna look good but basically my overall opinion on those are I like them I'm not super in love with them but the marketing of these is what got me because I mean look how gorgeous they are so if you are a nude lover and you do like this formula from Bobbi Brown you will like these so the last lips these aren't new arrivals I guess anymore but I did have a question as to whether or not I picked them up so I did want to talk about them with you guys Pat McGrath came out with some new colors of her blitz trance lipsticks I did a review on these when these first originally came out I think she came out with like six five or six new colors I picked up three so I'll just show you the ones that I got I really like this formula they aren't super glittery even though they are supposed to be glittery they're very subtle so the glitters aren't super noticeable especially in this one this is lady stardust it's like a super light pink really pretty that one's not too glittery Tom Ford came out with some super glittery ones so if you all do want like actual glittery lips definitely look into the new Tom Ford ones this is full fantasy this is my kind of color again you don't really notice the glitter in these colors but the colors themselves are gorgeous and then the other one that I got is flesh 3 which this one is quite deep when the light hits you can see the little glitters in them but they definitely are of subtle glitter so if you are literally expecting glitter lips you're not going to get that with these but they are extremely comfortable and super pretty and they are nice colors and i mean this packaging come on okay so i did just throw on some angel alessandra from the new charlotte tilbury line on my lips ignore my nails so sorry but um yeah that is all i have to talk about as far as the new arrivals from sephora goes hopefully this video was helpful for you guys i know i did already a review a lot of these products but I just thought it would be nice to compile all of these new Sephora products into one and tell you what works what didn't as well as showing you how I got this look and what I used so anyways I hope you guys found this video helpful I hope you enjoyed it let me know what you've recently picked up from Sephora or from this video what you're thinking about and I will see you guys in the next video thank you so much for watching guys bye have a good one